Welcome to episode 129 of the Radio Control Show. Sponsored by AmyandHobbies.com, your one-stop RC hobby store. This past weekend, Matt Higgins and I attended the first annual Ultimate Truck Challenge. We had a great turnout, and I think it's safe to say that everybody who joined us had a great time. As I mentioned last week, Matt and I built a couple trucks for this event, and I thought for sure my truck would do very well. well let's just say I got a little work to do. Matt won. I did. I uh, humbly accept your apology for uh, your ridiculous amount of trash talk. Yeah, yeah, so Matt well, won. Who cares, all right? It was driver error. It wasn't the truck. The truck's capable. Oh! <laughs> thing happened last time. I thought the course went the wrong other way. I didn't know I was going off the course. Nobody told me. What the heck is up with this? You didn't see any of these barriers? I didn't Bright see any, Bright green no. barriers? I won the, like I said, the 2.2 Tough Truck, which ironically they used a picture of Kevin's truck, which didn't receive any trophies on the trophy. But uh, there you have it. This is the Axial SCX-10 that I modified and competed with at the recent UTC. Now, when I was at the event, three things people commented on often were, first, the light bar, they want to know where I got that from, and that's from LD Products, and you can get it from RPP Hobbies. And it's a Delrin machined plastic light bar with a series of LEDs inside of it. The second question I got asked a lot was where I got the wheel weights or axle weights and these are actually called brass knuckles and they mount to the knuckles made by Vanquish and the knuckles are also made by Vanquish products and they're machined out of solid brass and they just bolt right on and you can check those out uh, like I said at Vanquish and the third thing people asked me a lot about was the rear steer and how I had it set up and how I got it to work the way it worked and if you want to learn more about this type of setup I show you how it's done back at rccaraction.com Air surveillance just got a little more cutting edge thanks to the latest developments from a German company called Microdrone. They have been fine tuning their very successful MD4 1000 quadcopter and have amazing improvements. The MD4 1000 UAV now can be equipped with civilian grade high res video equipment to shoot still and action video. Since it's RC and GPS guided in an auto fly mode, this compact size eye in the sky can be used to inspect bridges, windmills, and high voltage wires. Plenty of people have heard of pocket bikes, but did you know they also make pocket quads? These little quads have a gas engine in them and are about the same size as a Fiskale RC car. Now you know what that means, right? Yep, you can convert them to RC. I know what my next big project is going to be. RC Warbirds are extremely popular and are constantly getting smaller and easier to fly. Model Airplane News editor Jerry Ersch got his hands on the new twin motor equipped Mosquito from Park Zone to put it through its paces. Look for it in the January issue of Electric Flight Magazine. Well here we are again at the flying field and today we're going to be flying the de Havilland Mosquito Mark VI and this is a uh, World War II twin and it's part of the uh, Ultra Micro series from Park Zone, and it's all foam. It uh, comes with uh, 
two motors. It's a, a four channel with rudder, elevator, ailerons in the throttle and uh, a unique feature for uh, an airplane this size is that it has actually counter-rotating propellers which means that they uh, turn together in opposite directions and what that does is that uh, eliminates any torque that would uh, want to make the airplane turn left or right if they were both turning in the same direction. It's also a bind and fly airplane so we bound it to the uh, X9303JR 2.4 transmitter and it takes all about 30-35 seconds to bind and you're ready to go as soon as you charge your battery. The battery sits in a uh, little uh, compartment in the nose of the airplane and uh, that's all the uh, uh, effort that's required is to charge the battery, bind your receiver to the transmitter, and you're ready to fly. A-Main Hobbies, the biggest selection of remote control cars, trucks, planes, and helicopters. Want parts and accessories? A-Main Hobbies has what you need. Visit us at amainhobbies.com or call 800-705-2215. Get it all at A-Main Hobbies. Leave your competition in the dirt. Pick up the new issue of the Radio Control Buyer's Guide at your local hobby shops and newsstands. It's packed full of gear that you'll want to get for your RC car. We even threw in a couple helpful articles as well. Looking for live updates about the show during the week? Follow us on Twitter and get behind the scenes photos, videos, and links to all the media we use in the show. Last Friday, we posted a video on Kevin's and Matt's tough truck that got a lot of attention on YouTube and Facebook and generated hundreds of comments. Thanks for the feedback, and you can look forward to more videos like this in the future. Get a chance to win an XTM Nitro Rail and an Electrofly F16 Falcon EDF. Just go to facebook.com slash RC car action and facebook.com slash model airplane news. Like us and click the link on the left to sign up. Well, that's it for this week's social media update. Don't forget to leave me a comment or ask me a question on Facebook. See you there. Remember to head to your local hobby shop or newsstand for the December issues of Radio Control Car Action and Model Airplane News. You can also check out rccaraction.com and modelairplanenews.com for everything we covered this week. Thanks again for joining us on the Radio Control Show. And we'll see you next time.